The night before it all started again, there had been a storm over Haverstock Hill, which turned the air electric and lit up the houses with a ghostly hue. Jody closed the window and switched her laptop off. She'd left it on to download a film, and the screen was flashing at her. She hadn't remembered falling asleep. She pulled her dressing gown tightly round her and looked at the time. It was well past 3am. Thunder rumbled ominously overhead. Rain lashed against the rooftop and water cascaded down the guttering. There had been plenty of storms before, but this one was so powerful it seemed to get inside her and make her head feel heavy. The wardrobe doors behind the bed rattled on their runners. They were sliding ones that opened horizontally. She never quite got used to sleeping next to them. She always imagined they would open up in the night and swallow her, or that there was something behind them waiting for her. There was another crash of thunder, then a thud on the roof above. Her heart jumped. She ran to the window and looked out. All she could see was the rain lashing down and the distant lights of the hospital. She opened the window a fraction and the wind nearly took it out of her hands. Rain arrowed onto the dressing table and paper wrappers flew across the floor like confetti. She pulled it too quickly. As she did, she heard a scratching on the roof, like something was being dragged along it. She froze. Something was out there. Maybe a bird had been buffeted against the slates and was struggling to stay upright. She heard it now by the gutter. Another bolt of lightning electrified the room. Then the scratching stopped. The rain beat harder on the roof. Jody put her hands over her eyes. She wished it would go away. She sat on her bed and wondered if she would wake Aunt Jean and tell her. The thunder rumbled into the distance, but the rain continued unabated. It seemed like heaven and earth were in some diabolic union, the pregnant sky in labour with their child. Then, as quickly as it had come, the rain relented. When it became a pitter-patter, she took her hands away. The sliding doors stopped their rattling and the wind died down. The storm had passed. She was so intent on listening to it, she hadn't heard the footsteps. The knock made her jump. Are you okay? It was Aunt Jean. Yes, the storm woke me. Do you need anything? No, I'm, I'm fine. You're sure? You're not frightened? She paused. No, not tonight. She heard the footsteps wind down the stairs and the door to Aunt Jean's room closed. She lay on her bed in her dressing gown and stared out of the dormer window. The clouds broke to reveal a clear sky. She half expected to hear another thud, then the scratching to start again. Every sense was on a tripwire, ready to send alarm bells ringing. But she heard nothing. Her head was still heavy and she couldn't sleep. She took out her sketchbook and tried to draw, but she was distracted. Her eyes were drawn to the wardrobe doors. They hadn't moved, but she had the feeling again that there was something behind them and that the reason the scratching had stopped was that something was in the attic with her.